What's up, vapors? Thanks for checking out Daily Vape TV. My name is Nick, and it's Fresh Build Friday. That's right, we got a brand new coil technique for you guys to try out today. Uh, so this one I have never done before. This is the magnet technique for spinners. Uh, I've been using the jig with these fishing spinners on it for quite some time now, and I feel like I'm pretty used to that technique. This one is brand new to me. I've never done this one before, but I feel like uh, it's going to be not that difficult. A buddy of mine uh, gave me a set of magnets, so that's why I'm going to be trying this one out for you guys today. Today we're going to be building on this uh, Rock Vape Origo RDTA, uh, which is one of those little uh, drippy kind of tanks. I, I really don't even know what to call it. It's kind of like the Sub Ohm Innovations big dripper. Anyways guys, grab your mod, grab your wick, grab your wire, grab your addy, grab your tools and all that good stuff. Let's go down to the close-up view and build this thing up. All right guys, so I got something a little bit different for you today. Uh, a buddy of mine just gave me these magnets here. Uh, so we're going to be trying out a new technique for swivels with magnets. We've got a package of rare earth here uh, and some block magnets. These are just plain old big square magnets. So let's just go ahead and prepare our workstation here. Just be very careful with these because they can shatter. So just be try to be a little bit more gentle with them. Um, I just got my normal stand here that I normally use. And we're just gonna attach the big block magnets on there first. And I've got to get these out of the package, so uh, we'll use the scissors out of our kit. And yeah, so a buddy of mine, Mike, uh, gave me these for the purpose of learning the magnet technique. He went to the hardware store and picked up some magnets, and they were pretty cheap. I think they were about a dollar fifty for each one of these packages here, so uh, he decided to give me some as well. So thanks a lot, Mike. I, I really do appreciate that. If I could get this package open, I would really like that. There we go. So again, just be uh, a little bit more cautious when you're working with magnets, just because they can latch on pretty tight. And these are pretty small. You can get them in different sizes, but um, this is what I'm working with here. So stick those on. Uh, they're going to fit pretty darn tight on there, so shouldn't have to worry about anything falling off at all. And right here I have just a normal keychain loop with one spinner. You can do it without the spinners, but uh, I've seen a few people try it with the spinners and they said they prefer it with the spinners, so I'm just going to go ahead and try it with the spinners. I have pre-cut myself enough wire for a single 7-wrap coil, which is what we're going to be building today for a fuse clapton. This is 26 gauge nichrome. I'm going to thread it through the first little eyelet and match it up with the other side of this lead here. And I'm just going to run my fingers across it. Oh, oh, oh going to run my fingers across it like so and just tighten it up on the other end and I usually try to give it an extra little pinch um, so that's all we're doing with the prep work there I'm just going to leave that attached on there and get my other wire my outer wire ready we're going to be working with some 36 gauge nichrome today for our outer wire and again uh, don't take this as the only way to do it. Obviously there are tons of ways you can do this. This is just the way I'm choosing to do it today. So if you see other videos online, you know, I, I wouldn't say, I, I don't think any builder could tell you there's one specific way you actually do a fuse clapton or anything like that. So just kind of go with whatever way works best for you. That's, that's my general advice there for you. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a bend on this end here and just start my wraps. Just do a few wraps by hand just to get it started so it locks into the chuck really nice. Like that. Put this wire into the chuck of the drill. Try to get it as centered as possible. Now I've seen a few people do this technique before and they've had pretty good luck. I've heard you can put a little bit of tension on the wire, but you don't want too much tension. That's the key. You don't want too much tension going on the wire there. Uh, but you can basically have it to where the wire is pretty much floating. You don't even have to have it ac actually connected. You can have the uh, 
wire kind of floating away from the magnet just ever so slightly, but it's going to want to attract that pretty strongly there, but we'll see how it goes when we spin it up here. Hopefully nothing binds up or anything. So let's just go ahead and get started. Just make sure our drill is turning the right way. There we go. This is going to be a little bit of an interesting technique for me. There we go. Let's go ahead and spin up that drill. Not too bad. A um, little bit tighter than I would have liked to have seen, I suppose. Uh, usually I try to get it to spin a little bit more freely, but I think the spinners did their job really well. And overall, I think it's a, a very useful technique. I definitely will be trying this again in the future. The wire came out pretty good, if I do say so myself. So uh, I'm just gonna really quick, just try to neaten up this wire a little bit more. Then we'll go back and do a little bit of a close up. So here's the wire we just made. Uh, I think it came out pretty darn good. I only had one little minor mistake in there and it was fairly easy to correct. Uh, I was kind of surprised. I thought the magnets would spin a little bit more freely, but I'm gonna have to just kind of tweak it ever so slightly, I think, for next time. And I think I'll master that technique. Uh, so zooming out now, I'll show you guys what we're gonna be building on today. This is the Rock Vape. Uh, Origo RDTA. It's kind of like a, not a squonker, but it's kind of the opposite of a squonker. Basically, it feeds from the top when you push down on this little, on uh, the drip tip here. So uh, that's what we're going to be building today. I'm going to be doing a review of this in the near future. So I kind of wanted to try building it myself just so I can give you guys a little bit more of a personal experience kind of thing. Uh, we'll be using a three millimeter bit size today. That's what we're going to be wrapping around. And we're going to do a seven wrap single coil, which should ohm out right around 0.4 ohms. I feel like that's a nice safe spot for the uh, vapor flask stout. And I've had good luck with coils like that in the past. So that's what we're doing. Now, this is pretty standard. You've seen me build this same coil a few times in the past. So I really feel like I don't have to explain a whole lot or I shouldn't have to at the very least there. So I'm just gonna kind of wrap this and talk about, you know, this Arigo dripper. Um, so yeah, I got in contact with the manufacturer a few weeks before I went, left, from, uh, left for Vegas and they decided to send me out a sample of what they were working on. And yeah, they, they kind of replied to that email. Uh, I, they asked if I received it. I said yes. And they said, oh, well, if you like the sample, then make a video. And if not, we'd like to hear your thoughts. And which means to me, they don't really want me to make a video if I don't like it. But um, I'm going to be doing a video on it anyways. So uh, I will be doing a full review on this thing in a few weeks. And you want the leads facing opposite directions, uh, just like you would build your traditional kind of K-Fun or something like that. And actually I'm gonna show you a cool little technique for building on something uh, like this here, when you can't just put it straight through a, a set of post holes or something like that. So what I normally do is I put the coil through one of the post holes there we go. So we're going to thread this right through the middle. I think that'll fit with a three millimeter. I'm hoping. So normally what I do is I lock in that coil. I leave a little bit of a gap, I'll leave a little space here. And then I lock in that coil. This is kind of like the, this is going to make it sound like I'm old or something, but the Limo two, Back in the, you know, what was it? Last year, the year before, when the Limo 2 came out, I had to build on that and it was pretty much like this kind of build deck here. I, I think the uh, the smoke tech, the single coil smoke tech uh, deck is about the same. So, oh, there we go. So you can just kind of adjust it like so. Make sure I'm on camera. 
And this is gonna be the tricky part, is actually threading this back through. I could trim it. I might have to trim it. Oh, no, it went through no problem. So I'm gonna grab it with my pliers and force it through. Probably would have been easier just to trim it. I need a third hand. Oh, and the screw fell off. Lovely. So I'm gonna deal with this off camera real quick and then I'll be right back. All right, it may look like a wiry mess right now, but I finally got it to where I like it. So now I'm just gonna reinsert that bit back through and adjust it. You really don't have to put too much pressure on it or anything like that. It should just go relatively easily. And you're gonna probably correct it <clears throat> a little bit more when it comes time to fire this thing up. So we're just gonna trim our leads real quick. Just like that. And just uh, make sure the coil is positioned right over the airflow section. Um, otherwise, you're gonna get no airflow to your coil. And let's turn our device on here. We'll tune this coil up. I'm gonna turn down the wattage to about 35, uh, 25 watts. Just barely gently pulsing it. Just like that. You get that nice color on there. I'm really not looking for the, uh, the color shot or anything for this one. I'm just kind of looking to get this thing ready to go, ready to vape. And with very minimal effort, you've got a nice fused Clapton coil on there which I think is gonna work out a hell of a lot better than the stock coil that was in there before that had some probably twisted 26 or something like that. It was just kind of really cheap wire tasting. The flavor was definitely not as good there. So this coil seems like it's pretty tuned up. Let's just go ahead and fire it once at a higher wattage. I'm gonna turn it up to about 50 watts. And we're looking good. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get our wick all ready and we'll wick this thing up. All right, so before I put the cap on, let's just show you a little bit of vapor production off of this coil. I'm just gonna back off the camera real quick. Show you once again, this is at 50 watts. Not too shabby. All right, so I'm just gonna fill up this tank real quick. We'll go back to the main screen, have a vape on this thing, and talk about this coil a little bit more. All right, guys, we are back. Now we're gonna be going over some of the finer details of this building technique as well as this coil here. Uh, so first of all, let me just bring in, or bring back, I should say, my jig. Um, now I've seen it done without these big magnets in the back here, but I feel like those definitely help with the stabilization of the stack of magnets here. Uh, I've also seen it done with some bigger earth magnets. Uh, those are gonna be kind of crucial, I think, but I feel like these have pretty good strength behind them. 
Uh, when I go to try to take the key ring off, it actually takes the whole stack of magnets. So you kind of have to find that right balance of materials here. I feel like I need maybe a small key ring, a smaller key ring or something like that, that kind of would balance out the power behind this, the strength of the metal versus the magnets. Uh, because I was getting a little bit of a, a binding issue with the actual uh, key ring itself. So I'm going to have to find something a little bit smaller. I've seen other people use a nut on there and uh, they just twist their wire right through the center of the nut. And that tends to work pretty well. So I might have to try that again in the near future. Uh, but this worked actually pretty decently for my first attempt, I feel like. Uh, I was able to do it without issue. The spinners did their job. Uh, they definitely helped the magnets work. But overall, I I didn't get any binding or anything like that so uh, the wire didn't even really twist up nearly as much as how it usually does when I'm just using the spinners by themselves. So overall I really do uh, like this technique. I definitely will be implementing it in future build videos so make sure you stay tuned for those. Uh, but honestly, again, this is just kind of my own style of doing this build. You can just kind of find your own way if you have a different technique, if you like to hold the wire close, if you like to pinch the wire, whatever you got to do to get the build done, I think that's the right way to do it. So uh, just kind of find your own style and your own way to do things. Uh, I am not the master builder. You know, I always look up to the guys like Squid Dude and Twisted Messes and everyone else out there that's posting these crazy builds on Instagram. I'm just just a guy that's looking for a unique and different kind of vaping experience. So moving on a little bit to the build here, uh, my first category is always the heat. This one, the final resistance came out to 0.43 ohms, which is pretty spot on to what I was expecting for a seven wrap fuse Clapton coil using 26 and 36 gauge nichrome. Uh, the heat is above average, I'd say. I'd say it's a little bit warm to hot rather than uh, the nice warm vape I was kind of expecting. So I might actually turn this one down to about 40 watts. I think that's going to actually work out better for me because at 50 watts, uh, it's a little bit strong for me personally. Um, but nothing I really can't stand. I feel like me building the coil a little bit differently than the stock coil. I have it raised up a little bit more. Uh, I feel like I used a little bit more cotton than they used in the original build that was in this thing. But the quality of the wire and the material that I use in the coils themselves really makes a difference as far as the flavor is concerned. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, moving on to my second category, which is the ramp up and ramp down time. Um, pretty average, I'd say. Uh, let's just go ahead and take one more puff off of this thing at 40 watts and I'll give you a, a better judgment on the ramp up time. Yeah, so first of all, the heat is a lot more tolerable at 40 watts rather than 50 watts. Also, the ramp up time uh, just kind of is added a, an extra about half a second or so onto it. So I'd say it's about a full second between when you hit the button and when it fully fires up. But that is definitely acceptable in my book. I feel like that's perfect for me. Um, if you're one to purge, then you can purge. I personally don't purge with tanks, but I guess that's a personal decision. This is a spot on for the ramp up where I like it. That nice balance of ramp up and heat. Moving on to the difficulty of this build. This one's not too difficult if you know how to do fuse claptons. Uh, as far as the magnet technique, this was my first time doing it. So honestly, if I can do it first try, I feel like anyone out there that has some experience with fuse claptons can do this very easily. I mean, for a cost of about $3 at any hardware store, I feel like everyone should at least give this one a try. Uh, uh, but the fuse clapped in itself uh, really had no real big issues. I had one little mess up in my wire, but that is nothing. I mean, usually it's two or three before I get to the end of the strand there. So not a bad overall experience, I got to tell you. Uh, as far as the flavor on this build, excellent. I got to tell you, uh, the flavor is top notch. I love the fuse clapped in wire to begin with. So uh, just putting that in a tank like this and just improving the flavor over the original build that was already in here. Uh, uh, like tenfold, easily tenfold, uh, ten times better flavor than the coil that was originally in here. So finally I'm able to actually sit down and enjoy this tank rather than just kind of dealing with that metallic kind of flavor to it. Yeah, I would definitely recommend uh, giving this type of coil a shot if you have a device similar to this. Maybe not so much the uh, dripper kind of style device, but maybe uh, if you have a single coil tank out there, uh, then definitely give that one a shot. 
Anyways, guys, that about does it for this video. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe for more videos just like this. Stay tuned for next week's Fresh Build Friday video where we do a brand new build every single week. Don't forget to leave some comments in the box below of what you thought of this build, the magnet technique, whatever you want to talk about. I'd love to discuss it down there in the comments with you guys. Of course, check the advocacy links in the description below. Uh, make sure you're fighting for your right to vape. Check me out on all my different social media pages. I have Twitter and Instagram. Make sure you follow me on there. Like my page on Facebook. Check out my Snapchat. And if you want to give me a couple of bucks on Patreon, I wouldn't mind that as well. So thanks so much again for watching guys. And as always, vape on.